r slash adulting. Lala Klatasuga says. Why do people pretend body positivity is real when slim slash fit girls continue to receive the most romantic attention? I cannot take body positivity from other women seriously because of this. They tell me to curve a guy who does not pursue me while chubby, when that is most men. When I slimmed down, I was shocked how completely differently men acted. They were persistent, flirty. I was not being laughed at and ignored. My first attempts at dating failed, because I was still awkward and insecure, which the men couldn't understand for my age. By my mid-twenties, and with my body, how could I have been a virgin? Not know how to flirt, how to act I mourn the years I was overweight growing up, and missed out on experiencing dates for dances like homecoming and prom. I will never comprehend young love. I did not begin getting seriously asked out until my mid-twenties, at my slimmest weight, relative to my height, since early puberty. Why are men more honest about this, while women dance around this topic? They think saying they found their husband, while obese disproves my argument, but I'm talking about male attraction to a woman overall, not the few needles in. A haze tack. I enjoy the attention and crave it now, which I'm somewhat ashamed to admit to it sucks, but it's reality and I have to just accept I will have to work hard for a partner, whether or not I feel love for them or not. The older I get and remain single, rejected after dates, the less and less I believe in love as this pure, unconditional entity. I do not think love is truly blind in actuality, just in theory. My love life is so shitty I sometimes feel ashamed to be a woman, ashamed to be alive. I gained weight after experiencing sap and am now trying to motivate myself to slim down again. Because most of my life has shown me that no one will love me outside my family. Even girls won't be as nice and inviting if I'm not slim and fit. Life is short and norms will not drastically change in my lifetime. Despite all the propaganda in the media stating otherwise and painting life nowadays as this progressive utopia. I know what is real through my experiences, not theories. Click underscore to underscore sign underscore in says. Body positivity isn't supposed to be about male attention. Lil sis 061016 says. Yup. It has to do with treating people like people regardless of their physical appearance or limitations. Op is conflating respect and lust slash attraction. Mad skills 3 says. I stand for the original message of body positivity, which was to accept people and still love them, despite unchangeable external appearances. These appearances can be burns marks, scars, or lost limbs due to a birth, defect slash war slash accidents, etc. Now the body positivity movement is basically promoting obesity slash morbid obesity as healthy. One can be beautiful at any size subjective, but one can not be healthy at any size. Yes, you should love yourself at any size. However, love yourself to acknowledge that being obese slash morbid obese is not healthy. Love yourself to know that you'll run into health problems in the future and your lifespan will surely shorten due to many health complications associated with obesity slash morbid obesity high cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, etc. And yes, I would say the same thing to someone who is on the other side of the spectrum like anorexic. The goal is to be at a healthy body weight slash fat and adopt a nutritious eating lifestyle. This will make a positive impact on your appearance, mental health, and your organs will be more healthy. My Nami Skittles says. You'll never be able to convince most men to be attracted to obesity. It's not healthy in humans and every other animal instinctually aren't attracted to sick or unhealthy people. But it's the same for women. Most women aren't attracted to fatter guys. Let me guess, neither are you. Two sides of the coin here. Joy Janort says. Body positivity isn't about forcing others to want you. It's about loving yourself and enjoying your life and not worrying about the people who don't. Crisis underscore and underscore August says. Body positivity is a social movement. It's progress. 
body positivity is just as real as feminism. And unfortunately just as real as the discrimination against people that don't fit the trending beauty standards. Body positivity is the effort to change the beauty standards to normalize and romanticize bodies that don't perfectly fit the one we have now. Dank Emma Hoffman says. Because it's not healthy to be obese. It causes lots of complications. That's not to say there aren't people who aren't attracted to such people, but the pool will be smaller. Just how it is. If body positivity was real, it would apply to men especially below 6 feet, but reality is reality. Kman Harinton says. R slash illustrators. Drizzt3919 says. Guys like what they like. Some do like larger women. Men like different shapes as well as women. I know many women that don't want a bulky fit dude, prefer skinny, some only like guys with beards and other clean shaven. It's just what you are attracted to. Thebistin Therina says. The body positivity movement is just the other side of the same coin. Marketing. Those companies that show women with few pus to sell clothing? They are making a huge profit doing so. That's their target audience. Same as the companies that market to thin women, same as the companies that market inclusivity, etc etc etc. They are there to make a profit. Don't be deceived into an entire lifestyle by a good marketing campaign. Think about how you feel when you're alone, no noise are you content with where you are? If so, great. We can argue healthy, natural, us, them, men, women. Beauty, fashion, standards, blah 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 all day to absolutely no avail, but I challenge an obese person to look me in the eye and tell me it feels good to have your few per sweat on top of your thighs and you love it. All the chatter aside do you feel good in your body? Do you enjoy the feeling of having fat rolls? Are you pain free in content? If you're obese, and you think it's a shame non-obese people of the opposite sex don't pursue you think about it a little deeper. What are you two going to do together? One of you wants to go hiking, while the other person can't go up the stairs without knee pain, and losing their breath. One person has a need for sugar, fat and processed food, while the other is working on dialing in their dietary numbers solely, to achieve athletic performance goals. Your vibe will attract your tribe. Girikali says. For me body positivity is about accepting and loving yourself, not making other people attracted to every body type, at least I see it that way. Imago underscore Storm says. I don't know how to flirt either, and at some point, drop the silly act. Flirting is like a hint, the other person drops it, but it will be your responsibility and they can always pretend that you got it wrong. So it is unfair, get some courage to talk cleanly, or get off my lawn. And lo and behold, people do like the straight talk, it is like wow no more stupid games with stupid prizes? I'm all in. Individual underscore speech underscore 10 says. Because body positivity isn't about seeking romantic attention, and losing weight, just to be attractive to other people instead of doing it for your own well-being isn't going to last or make you truly happy. It's about being comfortable in your own skin, and not being miserable all the time, because of how you look. If people truly cared about the health of fat people, they would want them to feel good about themselves, so they have the motivation, to live their best life. People who are constantly ridiculed and put down aren't going to care about their health. All of this has been proven time and again, and yet people just don't seem to care about the facts while accusing fat people of the same. But like I said, they don't actually care about their health. They just want people to judge, and shame and fat people are an easy target for it. Lorab2324 says. From who though? It's all fake. Big girls have six, boyfriends, husbands. They may be bullied more, but they are in couples equal to thin women. It's all a lie, fk's sake. Just because people are mean doesn't equate to any reality. I've never met a big woman that couldn't get a date. Laskoid says. 
Man, people was hitting on me when I was slim and low and behold, are still hitting on me as fat. I'm not like the most handsome gal ever, but I'm nice enough. Conventional Horst says. The body positivity movement as it first existed was good. It has now been co-opted by capitalism in the same way that self-care has, it's lost its original meaning entirely. Icebox Gian says. I've been overweight my whole life. I understand what you mean, and I definitely was not pursued like some of my friends, but I have other thin friends who weren't pursued either. After I graduated HS, I had relationships and friendships and neither made me feel bad for how I looked. Being overweight doesn't limit you from living your life. Granted, I didn't get asked to prom, but I think that has more to do with my personality than my weight. r slash adulting just here for vibe says as a woman what the fck does business casual mean i've been wondering this for years but i have an interview for my first big adult job coming and it's recommended to dress business casual and i still don't know what that means looking up pictures doesn't help because it's like okay you can wear a dress but it can't be too dressy you can also pants or skirts but not all of them, they have to be buccinacy enough and somehow every site has different opinions on business casual for women. I'm truly tired, and don't know how to make it work. Katika Twombert says. If you're going to an interview, then nice officia could be okay. I usually go in a pencil skirt, I have a pencil dress I specifically use for interviews, and a light blazer, flats, and any handbag, that doesn't look too outrageous. If you wear pants, I'm a dress girl, so it's rare for me, wear some women office work pants, black or dark blue, wear a blouser, and a blazer, or skip it. Usually for business casual nice jeans are fine, but I would not wear to an interview. Ironis Culpable says. The way you decode this is by web searching for women business casual versus business formal in either business casual or formal, dresses slash skirts should be no higher than knees no athletic footwear pants must not be jeans business casual, blouses or dresses can be sleeveless no business jacket open toe footwear acceptable, but should not be mistaken for beach sandals. Business formal dress or blouse cover shoulders, and is below cut if wearing pants, wear a business jacket. Aka pantsuit flats should be closed toe high heels acceptable cocktail, aka after 5pm, business formal. As business formal, but, skirt slash dress above knee, is acceptable no collared shirts. Mental underscore resource underscore 1620 says. I dress like a dude. I wear a button up collar shirt and business pants with usually sperries. Household name says. Think what Eleanor Porsche would wear to church. Opus underscore Zier says. Slacks and a button up shirt or blouse. You could wear a cardigan instead of a blazer. Elbow length blazer is casual. I agree, do not wear jeans, and no t-shirts. Avoid flip flops. I want to say some a thing to says. As a woman, business casual refers to certain stores. And Taylor. Banana Republic, J Point Crew. Or something similar. Your underscore daddy underscore says. I always hated business causal dress. Mostly I hate tucking in my shirt. Punks don't tuck in their shirts, lol. Only catch me in a tighter wedding, or a funeral, and even then, probably not. I have always hated adhering to dorky work clothes and dress codes. Things have changed since COVID, but I have always worn slacks with button-up casual shirts, nothing dressy. Now that I work hybrid, only really get dressed like twice a week, though the rest is just t-shirts and shorts around the house. TCRHS says. No jeans, no t-shirts, no tank tops, no crop tops, no flip-flops, no shorts, nothing too tight, short or revealing. No heavy cleavage, no visible bra straps. Don't look sloppy. Dressier is fine, but beachy or club attire is not. My go-to business casual look is a pencil skirt, a cardigan set, and low-heeled shoes. Terribly tattooed says. 
it depends on region and industry, honestly. A startup, arts, or fashion company on the west coast is going to have a totally different expectation of business casual than an insurance office, finance, or conservative senator's office in Washington DC. It can really range from anything to sleek jeans, as long as you have on the right top and shoes to basically a suit without the jacket. For an interview, though, err on the more formal side. Dark slacks or a structured skirt, conservative blouse or button-up shirt, flats or conservative heels, maybe a blazer, but that shouldn't be necessary. Take note of how the employees and interviewers are dressed, and use that as a guide. Even so, in your first few weeks, avoid jeans, especially light-colored, ripped, or trendy cut jeans, sneakers, cheap sandals, shorter skirts, shorts, and anything made of chert material, until you know for sure that's okay for your position. Wolfman 1961 says. Nice blouse and dress slacks slash skirt. Bubbly underscore competition 81 says. Stick to basics, or elevated basics solid print and high quality. Safe underscore butterscotch 239 says. Usually means dark pastel colors and a button-up blouse. Obkaritz says. It varies from company to company, but when you're starting out somewhere it's safe to start with something pretty basic. Blouse or sweater, dress pants, simple boots or flats. No need for heels or a jacket in most cases. Avoid jeans or sandals at first. Take a look around at what others seem to be wearing to work, and just take note of little things like how much cleavage, if any seems normal. Are people wearing blazers? Are people wearing open-toed shoes? Sneakers? Jeans? I dressed up more business formal when I first started at my job, but gradually became more business casual just to fit in. I love dressing up any chance I get, my company's definition of business casual is casual. Most people show up in jeans, a t-shirt and sneakers every day. If a big customer is visiting the sales team might put on a polo or dress shirt lol. I stick to a turtleneck or cute patterned blouse and wide leg pants or black skinny jeans and a low heeled boot or low for most days. Company culture definitely plays a role. I work in tech, sort of. And it's just super casual. But I expect, if I move towards agency work I'd need to turn up the business part a little bit. Motor Injury 4748 says. Depends on the type of business. Ray Z says. I do chat with cardigan with light dress pants from Ann Taylor or something. Don't think too much, no jeans, no hoodie, nothing ripped or too revealing. If they are nice jeans black or dark blue could be okay, it really depends on how casual it is. Queen Sassafras says. Blazer for sure. Dress pants or a pencil skirt would work well with a nice blouse. Pelza 918 says. The most basic form nice pants and a sweater with flats. However, if you want to go more in depth the smarter side of business casual could include skirt, heels and or blazer. In my office jeans are a no, but sneakers are okay if worn smartly. Really it's the combination of the pieces that make it what it is. Jmaster says. I usually wear a pencil skirt or black pants with a nice blouse and pair it with a cropped blazer and some open toed heels that match my blouse I stick with black for the blazer and skirt or pants, and then my blouse is usually a pop of color with a pair of heels the same color or flats, if I'm not feeling heels that day. Nonidentifier says. Slacks, blouse, blazer, nice shoes. I recommend closed toed shoes. Personally I wear boots with a low heel with this outfit every day at my job. Lil Sis 061016 says. Skirt or nice dress pants with a blouse. Dresses are fine, as long as the hem isn't too high. In some industries, the term can include jeans, but don't do that for an interview. I am, however, a big fan of those dress pants that look awesome, but feel slash fit like yoga pants. Comfort and class. Little Biggle says. It means no jeans. Titan up 001 says. As a guy, khaki slacks and a button down. 
for ladies, skirt, or pants and a blouse. Joy Janort says. Go to Pinterest. Search women's business casual. Your Kelcom. Crazy Boy says. Look like you're casually strolling into a nice coffee shop, but you're not in sweats and you're ready to start your day. R slash adulting. J Obidham says. I'm living my life like a spoiled kid, and I hate it. I can't finish anything that I start, I'm in a vicious dopamine cycle, where I just want to watch YouTube videos, eat and masturbate all day, I can't take my responsibilities seriously nor my studies, waste my time doing stupid stuff that will not help me over the course of my life, I do my chores not, because I need to, but because it's a procrastination thing, where I prefer to clean the house for 3 hours straight, while listening to a podcast, than to study for one hour, the only times that I can do things properly is when I pretend to be another person and that only lasts a few hours slash days I need to pretend to be another person because I hate the course that my life is taking. I'm 23 years old and I'm way behind my peers and friends that's honestly something that deeply sadness me. I'm fat, dumb, don't know how to drive. I'm too scared to leave my parents house and leave on my own I don't want to be like this anymore. H3 year old underscore Herm says. Being an adult is not some plateau. You don't reach it and stay there with no further effort. Being an adult is precisely that, identifying and addressing your problems. The thing about that, though, is that it never ends. You will never be fully formed, complete like a statue ready to be displayed. You will constantly need to be adjusting, pivoting, and trying new things. You should be proud. You are registering areas in your life where you see a need for improvement. Many people never do. Davina Pernex says. But now you can take steps to address each issue individually and change. Okay you're fat. Start exercising. Dumb. Start learning. You have to be the one to make the decision to not quit and change your life around. Otherwise 10 years from now and you're 33 you'll be in an even worse spot. You are still young and can change many aspects of your life for the better. Make a plan and decision and start slowly changing your life around. Good luck. Some Guardian 420 says. Good. It's really good that you hate it. Let that motivate you to change your lifestyle. People that are comfortable in this way of living are the ones that are stuck. Lathada Penedwis says. Habit loops start with a cue. Figure out what happens right before you start your vicious dopamine cycle and reprogram yourself to respond to that cue differently. Run or something, I don't know. Don't even do a little bit of the behavior you're trying to avoid. When you receive the cue, you have to respond immediately with a new routine. After a few weeks you will have formed a new habit, and will do it, just as effortless as you do your current habits. Careful, you are making a new habit, not overwriting the old one. The old one stays there, so you have to be mindful that it doesn't come back. Jazz like underscore present 9049 says. Join the military. Rancy side says. Well, you've identified your areas of need. Now you have to put in the work. Choose one thing, take small steps. I like to start with making a list, crossing stuff off the list, gives you that dopamine rush as well. Do things in small increments, if I study for an hour, I can listen to 30 minute podcast, if I do 3 tasks on my list, I'll watch an hour of TV won't happen overnight but only you can take control. FJ40 Crusher says. Then do one thing today, to improve who you were yesterday. Go to the gym, get obsessed with being better. It's all a mindset, and you have full control. Dealey Kelly says. All that dissatisfaction, sadness, and anger with your current situation, can be used as a very powerful fuel to turn your life around. I suggest you choose a date sometime soon, 
maybe a few days from now, maybe a week from now, but sometime relatively soon, where you make a commitment that when you wake up on that day, that you will start living like the person you want to be and know you can be. That doesn't mean that on that day you will all of a sudden be in better shape, or all of a sudden be a harder worker, or all of a sudden be more skilled and smarter that day, but it does mean that you will wake up that day with a positive mindset about your future and a willingness to finally start taking those steps to be who you want to be. It means you wake up that day and take your studies seriously and plan out some days and times each week where you will focus on studying. It means that you wake up that day and decide to take a long walk around the park to get your heart rate up and get active. It means that on that day you stop beating yourself up for who you have been and start thinking positively on who you are right now and who you will become now that you are serious about improving yourself. It means on that day, the old you will not be waking up that morning, it will be the new you, the you that you want to be. We all have parts of ourselves that are lazy, that would rather take it easy than put in the effort. We all do. What matters is which voice do we listen to inside of us? Do we listen to the part of us that wants an effortless life, even it means we are incredibly unhappy and unfulfilled each day living it? Or do we listen to that voice that says you can be all of these things you want to be, if only you gave it an honest effort each day? We choose how we live our lives. We choose how much effort we put in on a daily basis. We choose how we present ourselves to the world. We choose the voices inside of us that we decide to listen to. Make the right choices. Choose that day, sometime soon, where you wake up and decide you have had enough with feeling unfulfilled. Choose to start the rest of your life and leave behind that sadness and anger with yourself for good. The true you, the happy you, the hard working you, is inside and you need to let that voice become the dominant voice and dominant force in your life. Now is the time. Trakeg says. Great, congrats. That's the first step it only gets better from here. Left to drown says. Self-discipline, don't go on YouTube, go to the library. Looking up stuff to help you on YouTube is just gonna wind up you binging cat videos in the end. Xstar3388 says. Maybe pick one thing each day to start making better. Put it on a whiteboard, in the kitchen, so it's in your face, do not use your phone. Set some goals with little mini goals to get the dopamine motivating you. Don't watch porn and take a masturbation break. Turn your phone completely off until your lunch break, no social. Once you add all of this up, it will make a big difference. I had to gamify certain things in my life to stop procrastinating. I'm nowhere near perfect, but it definitely helps. I don't even turn my phone or TV on until I get some chores and one decent bout of work done. It's a reward, not a distraction. Good luck. Where good says. You need to get on that grind and improve yourself. You are either your own best friend or your own worst enemy. Face your fears and overcome your weakness. Push yourself. Have no limitations. Keep on going. You can do it. Overall vacation 2324 says. When I need something changed I use the people around me also as anchors. Like I tell them I'm fasting today. It's hard but, if you announce it everyone knows, and will not offer you food. They also will check you, and be like hey aren't you fasting? Why are you picking up that candy bar? Fearless underscore strategy says. Pain and discontent can be a great motivator. Jagelatu says. Then don't be. It's as simple as that. It's a choice. r slash adulting akatsuki 949 says i cut everyone off and worked on me for years but now i'm alone i had a couple tragic things happen in my life from losing my father and finding him dead to getting a phone call my daughter's mother died at 24 years old i'm 29 now and i grieved for a solid year in my feelings and just being super pessimistic and hating life Drinking like a monster and just not caring for anything. 
About 2 years ago I dropped everyone and everything connected to my past, and made the decision I was gonna do better and be better. In that process of self-healing I put my mental health first. Fast forward 2 years, and I'm the best version of myself I've ever been. Credit is good, and I paid a lot of my debt off, recently just bought a car for myself, and my outlook on life, did a complete 180. My problem is now I'm alone. I honestly don't mind it, but I also know my daughter doesn't deserve it, and she is a social butterfly. But when I try to put myself out there, not in a relationship sense, I'm constantly reminded why I did what I did, and how toxic everyone is. I've been to a few groups of like-minded people. But even those it's like we are in two different realms. I know I made the right decision years ago, but I also don't want it to affect my daughter. I'm just not sure how to get back into the world. I don't club anymore or do drugs. I go to a lot of events with my daughter and have fun, but sometimes I catch myself not really there, if you know what I mean. IDK. I will continue to keep my mental health as priority, and won't let anyone or anything take that away from me. Especially when I put so much work into it. But I also know it's not healthy. I've turned into a gym rat lol, and it helps a lot, but I also know that's not enough. There is a huge world out there to explore, and I want to explore it. Just ranting. Thanks for. S55555 S says. Maybe look into your town groups for social activities, meetup group. Facebook, next door etc. Wolf Bidilfa says. I'm not quite the right person to give you any advice on the matter, but I just wanted to pass by and commend you for still thinking of your daughter despite all the things you went through. It's super rare to find people who are decent parents these days, so I just wanted to tell you that you're an excellent one. Wagum says. There's a saying, if you want to go fast go alone, if you want to go far go together seems like you went pretty fast the past couple years and now you need some community living, you'll find your people. Spiritual Bridge 3027 says. Join your daughter in activity classes she's interested in, dance or kiddie gym or gymnastics, painting plus swim lessons. Kids activities not only keep you really occupied with all the time and task management involved, they also open up socializing opportunities for you. You'll meet your people soon. Tall Poem 6808 says. I don't know if it helps, but I can say you're not alone. I left an abusive relationship 7 years ago, moved to a different country in the middle of nowhere, and cut all contact with the people I knew then. It took me a few years to get better, still working on it, and I just didn't have the energy to care about other people, including some friends I have known for almost my whole life. So I'll let these connections die, or at least go down to next to nothing, and now I realize that I may never get these back. I tried to get myself out there also, joined the local motorcycle club for example. Besides the fact that I don't really speak the language here, I'm worried that I'm just not interested or interesting anymore. I can be social for a few hours, but ultimately I don't really give a shit about other people's lives, nor do I expect them to care for mine. Small talk is hard, even if I understand that it has to be the first step towards something more meaningful. So, I more or less gave up on making friends, I just do what I like. And happens what happens. Wrestles Fibra says. Sorry for your losses. That's incredibly heavy, and you definitely did the right thing by prioritizing your mental slash emotional health. You also said you'll never allow anyone to take that away from you. Don't ever forget that. I did. I worked on my stuff and got to a good place and then let a situation take me down. I have incredible regrets that I now shoulder by myself. You might feel alone, for now, but it won't always be, and I'm certain your daughter will eventually appreciate the sacrifices you made to be a better father. From my perspective you're just on a new path with a much healthier outlook which will get you where you want to go in time. 
There might be times in life where you have to make hard choices, but from my perspective, if it isn't about saving another's life, you always prioritize what's best for you, and you've done that. Brunette3030 says. Find a largish church with a thriving children's ministry. They have activities every Sunday, and usually on Wednesday nights too. My children go to Sunday school, children's choir, and Awana Bible clubs, one small yearly fee, every week, and a lot of churches host an inexpensive sports program called Champs. It has soccer, t-ball, flag football, etc. There's also music camp and vacation Bible school in the summer, very inexpensive. All these things are a great way for your child to meet and become friends with other children her age without spending $600 a month on various classes. Also, look on your local government website to see what children's programs slash activities are available in the parks and recreation system. You should be able to find something fun to go do with her weekly. Little Biggle says. Go to church get baptized they'll take you in. R slash adulting. Status tie 7176 says. Does anyone else struggle with class envy? I recently graduated college and I'm fully supporting myself. My family was poor growing up and you too. That my living situation with my parents is pretty shitty. I immediately got a full time job and have since picked up a part time job and other side gigs so I can afford to live on my own in a decent apartment. Many of my friends throughout high school and college came from rich families. Without even realizing it, I've distanced myself from them since I started, having to bust my ass 24 over 7, in order to support myself. I guess they just seem very entitled to me, because their parents slash living situations have resulted in them getting by much much easier than I am. Not even to mention, that I have dollar sign 40k plus in student loans and their parents paid for their education. One of my friends from college works a similar job to me, but in a very rich town, and is already able to afford his own house in the filthy rich area. I'm sure his parents helped him out with that too. Stuff like that has been bothering me a lot, and it sucks, because it makes me feel like I'm so much less than others, even though I'm grinding so hard trying to survive. Somehow, I have less to show for it, just because I didn't come from money. Edit, typo. NetJunkie says. Comparison is the thief of joy. Civil underscore to underscore everyone says. We start unequal. It is an unpleasant fact of life. However, jealousy and comparing yourself to others will not help that. Rich friends can help you. Connections matter. Their lifestyles can be shared with you when you visit. Don't be jealous. Be magnanimous. Continue your grind. They and their families can help you find opportunities. You did start with less, but play the game correctly, and you can rise to their level. You never asked if their parents had to grind their way up, and one day your kids can be in their position. I was the poor college friend. I ate on $2 a day for 5 years, and lived with roommates, until I was 29. I kept at it. People started helping me. FJ40 Crusher says. There will always be people around you with more, and people around you with less. Envy is the thief of joy, walk your own path. You'll feel better earning it yourself anyway. Goaty says. I found out that I was American poor as opposed to immigrant poor when I was in college and there were clothes dry as I could use. I thought we were rich because we had a car and a two story house, impossible to do so in my previous country. Then I moved to a very expensive private college and had to do my laundry. I wrapped myself in a warm fluffy towel and thought I'm the first person in my family who did this. That's when I realized my family was poor by us standards. Ten years later, I have a nice dryer slash washer, and feel like the queen of the world, when I wrap myself in a warm fluffy towel. I don't really envy the other folks I went to school with. I have fluffy towels. Osiris1212 says. 
I worked at a high class country club during high school and college and there is a huge gap between the rich and middle class in the US. I went to college and all that, but generational wealth is really the only way to reach that level, short of a lotto win, celebrity status, or athlete. There were even classes amongst the country club members those with only a few million, those with tens of millions, those with hundreds of millions, and even a couple billionaires. A lot of them were associated with Warren Buffett early in some way and their money grew out of control. And once you have money, it is much easier to make more. Heck, I could easily live off of the interest of one male, alone. Pitiful underscore opinion underscore 9331 says. Two thirds of my high school friends came from fairly well of families, while I was fairly poor I was jealous of what they had, but not of them. It pushed me to try harder, to achieve what some of them already had it worked, and I'm now where I wanted to be, or close to it. I'm still friends with all of them many years later. Capable Ground 9407 says. It's easy to forget, that there are many more people in this world, who are beneath you on the socioeconomic ladder than are above you. Try to keep in contact with people, who are where you would like to be, they just might be able to help you out with that dream job or who knows. Fappening Plus says. Not really. People that come from rich families usually have crazy shit going on, plus they are always paranoid about who's coming for their money, or if they only have friends because of it. I'm okay being normal and my parents only expecting me to give them grandkids. Impressive Wine 3434 says. It always bothered me when people had college slash car slash stuff paid for by parents or they had connections where they got jobs they either a weren't qualified for or b weren't at all the best candidate for. Then I realized at some point that all these people are still human, still have their struggles and if their life experience didn't shape them into a decent person then they will still find a way to frick up their life. I know it's easier said than done, but the best bet is to be in competition with yourself, not with others. Be a better version of yourself in the future and always strive to improve your own existence. Pancakes Honey says. I absolutely struggle with this too. I grew up incredibly similar to you. Growing up my family shopped at Goodwill and discount stores, because it was all we could afford. And this was back in the days, when you would get made fun of for buying stuff from the thrift store, because most people thought thrift stores were dirty and gross. I'm still living with my parent, and I'm paying my way my through school all, while working full time, at a job that sucks, and paying other bills. My hometown I grew up in is gentrifying, and it's just frustrating seeing all these people, that didn't grow up here, thriving here while I can't even afford to live on my own yet. Haunted Orn's Kitchen says. My mom dragged me into the rich circles she was trying for to see that those folks are miserable too. Gentel Guy says. Yeah right it but it mostly just made me work like crazy to move up the ladder, which does have its downsides like stress and also alienation from some people who either stayed where they were or moved down the ladder, but also upsides as well. Big Profession 6757 says. It's quite the opposite actually, you are above them, because you are doing it on your own. While they require help. Your work ethic and level of responsibility is far beyond those, which will help you succeed in life. That is something they do not have, nor will ever have. You are the superior one. Donkey Punch says. Wealthy family doesn't build character. Work your ass off, but be smart and opportunistic. You'll get where you want to be. Also put off gratification. Many look rich but are broke. Above all be thankful for what you do have. Maezia says. I envy people who had it harder than me, because they turned out more driven, and successful. They employ me, and they came from nothing. I had every privilege under the sun, and I work for them. Grievous47 says. If you have kids, give them what you did not have. Goals. As for current life don't compare yourself to others, if you get in that habit, if it isn't differences in money it'll just be something else. 
rate your happiness by your own contentment without using the lives of others as a yardstick. Latinus says. I'm a self-made person, and it took all my 20s before I quit my job and do well. I chose to go to state school which was expensive. You made a choice, like you were rich when you weren't. Be accountable for that. If you really are worth the lifestyle you think you deserve go and earn it. r slash adulting Nervous underscore diver 6833 says Should I move out of home, even though I truthfully don't want to but probably should. I live at home with my parents, I'm 24, and we have a great relationship. I sometimes feel sad that I don't have too many friends in my hometown, but make 90k and can afford to leave. Leaving would be leaving behind all comfort and routine, but I do know someone who wants me to move with her to Nick. Financially it will be different, but I can afford it, should I go for it? My parents are encouraging it, because a year ago I was really sad about being at home, and working a remote job without a lot socializing. Since then, I've honestly really come to be comfortable and am scared of moving to a show box. I should also mention I haven't been on a date in 4 years and haven't made a ton of new friends, and I'm basically just besties with my parents. Short Fisherman 4182 says. Sounds like you need to grow up and move on and experience the world outside the safety of your parents' home. It's the only way you will grow mentally, socially. It's a big world outside and will certainly bring with it many new wonderful adventures along with many challenges. Go for it and never look back. I'm sure your loving parents will continue to support you in the next phase of your life. New friends, opportunities. Mathsfan54 says. Honestly? This might seem cruel, but it's brutal honesty that I feel like someone should have said to me 20 years ago. Do it, don't live with your parents until it's too late. I was you. I only moved out at 36. Then the pandemic happened. It was the loneliest time of my life. No parents to come home to, no friends I can actually see in person. I'm still in a funk. I wish I had dormed. I wish I had moved earlier. It's all a huge regret now. Move out. Go out. Live outside. Macroscopic Anomaly says. I'm mid 40s. I can say that the best times in my life always had an amount of unpredictability. The unknown is scary. But it forced me to think quicker and adapt faster. And happiness comes from solving problems. And the more scary unknowns you conquer, the more happy you become. And that brings confidence, which, as I'm sure you've heard, opens a whole lot of doors. So make sure you have somewhat of a safety net, pack your bags, and fly. 05730 says, 90k is nothing in make. Negrol 412 says. Well how about this for a compromise? Instead of moving to a show box in Nick where you know you'll be miserable just because adult now? Why not move into your own apartment in your hometown, driving distance from the parents? And might I add therapy? I think you would really benefit from a few sessions with a therapist to figure out who you are and what you want out of life. Never make life-changing decisions when you're emotional. That's when you screw up your life. Nate76 says. Honestly, I probably wouldn't go to Nick. The ridiculous finances aside, unless you are used to city life, it's going to be a rude awakening. I would suggest some place a bit more lax, one that you could comfortably cover on your own with enough to keep aside for savings. You'll have far more space, and won't feel congested. Austin underscore native underscore 2 says. Are you living? Are you enjoying life, being social, experiencing and learning from various relationships? Or are just going to work, and coming home to your parents house, because it's comfortable and easy? Sounds like it's time to spread your wings. Parents aren't pushing you out of the nest, time to jump on your own go live your own life find new adventures 
Nora Jertzwolf Dog says. Lol I just moved back in with mine because of this. Frick, I'm economy. You ho bro bro says. Come to Nick it's litty titties here. West Coast 7654 says. Sounds like a good time to experiment. Terry out out for a year. Mind you, you could be a different kind of lively, if you don't purposely hang out with people still. Retread, 1964 says. You can afford it, and maybe it's time to let your parents feel the empty nest, it sounds like they're ready to spend some time with each other, if they are encouraging you. If you're fully remote, you can move anywhere. At first, you might want to stay in town, there's the safety cushion of having your parents nearby. Get a place, try out adulting. You don't have to live in a show box. Do you have to stay in your state? Find a place with a low cost of living, there are plenty. Save up for a financial cushion, and don't spend more than one quarter of your income on housing. No no 6569 says. Yay you should move out. If not now, when? Beginning underscore at 507 says. Do it, I promise it's going to change your life for the better, 90k is fine for a single person in Nick, you'll need to live in Brooklyn or Queens, look into Astoria, which is way better than living in Manhattan, and you'll need to find a room at or two. The best part? If you're completely miserable by the end of a one year lease on an apt, it seems like you can go back home. Truly, what do you have to lose? Ballet Parfait says. Does it have to be Nick? Your salary is comfortable for a single person in several cities, but Nick might have you struggling. However you can always do a year there, and then move to another place. Listergust says. If you make that much money, and can afford it then there's really no reason to stay. Subatheri says. Are you parents potentially excited to have an empty house? You should do what's best for you but something to consider, is if they are encouraging you just for you, or maybe for themselves as well, now that you are capable of being independent. Ros Kothedid says. I'm assuming her is a female friend not a love interest? If so then look at what is the risk. You are out some moving money, some rent, food, and maybe, maybe a friendship, if you determine to come home. Most of these decisions are not a one way door. You can go back in, if you determine it is safer with mom and dad. I tend to agree with them, go have fun, try new things, if it is a real love interest moving out of mom and dad's house, and moving in with a significant other all at the same time is pretty risky. Maybe get a place next to them in Nick, and see where it goes, even if you get a month to month lease or an extended stay hotel. And good luck, you got this. Street Crab 666 says. F the city, do you see what's going on? Lilithone says. Stay at home. You will not have another opportunity like this. Do develop a social life. Save like crazy now while you can, like 80% of your take home. Nacho2991 says. Honestly, unless you need to move for other reasons, no. Moving to Nick is a bad idea at the moment, unless you have everything T crossed, and every I dotted, and it came up, that those 90k are enough, which I highly doubt. If it's loneliness, that you suffering from, I would suggest to plan trips, or join your local community center, to see what activities they have. Really, unless you really need to, leaving your parents home at the moment, is a bad idea from everything that's going on. And if you need to, make sure you plan for everything, and consult with your parents, if your plans covered, or touched everything you would need to move and live in a new place. L underscore your underscore friend says. L19 Aquarium L. R slash adulting. Digi Liger says. Being an adult sucks. Disregarding the usual gripes about getting older and pains and bills and all that crap, why do adults end up becoming semi or full on recluse? What happened to randomly appearing at your friends when you know they are off work and surprising them with a random adventure across town or just to hang out even at home or going to see a local band or something? 
Why are almost all adults this mad? I hate uninvited guests. Leave me alone. How dare they try to provide companionship like what in the world is up everyone's ass. It seems about 27 or so people start getting the stick up their ass and start cutting off the entire world and everyone is an enemy of some sort. This goes double or triple for men. They get this lame behavior of my best friend is a guy I haven't seen since college or high school and we say two words to each other a year and they're the best like that somehow makes them cool. I'm sick of being an adult on every front there is, but especially the screw friends who needs the mentality that is constantly memed and pushed like it's something to be happy or proud about. I realized I had done the same thing, and before I knew it, I had basically no friends left, because they were all doing it as well so stars aligned, and bam now no one is hanging out with anyone for the most part and everyone just hates the world outside of their social media. Terribly tattooed says. Do people get a stick up their ass, or do they acquire a bunch more responsibilities and a spine to tell you to stop banging on their door asking for an adventure, when they are trying to sleep, or have sex or feed the baby or clean or something? You're not the main character of the universe. People are doing things for their own purposes, even if they are not at work or in front of you. If you text people beforehand, and ask in advance, if they want to join your adventure, I bet you'd get better responses. It may take some compromise on your part, having to schedule things, but your friends would probably appreciate a let's check out this band tomorrow a lot more than you just showing up, and demanding to be entertained. Thessening Tree says. FR sounds up sounds super annoying. Surprise, let's hang out now I'm chillin', long day op grumbles under breath it's like an entitlement to other people's time and a rant about how something is wrong with people for not humoring her. Two words for her, frick off. My Nami Skittles says. Spontaneous adventure is hard when you're an adult with responsibilities. Part of growing up, but that doesn't stop anyone from making plans in advance. I hang out with my friends, just text them ahead of time and pack a date we both have free. Not hard to shift to doing that. Dissociative as Susan says. I'm still in my early 20s, but I prefer at least a heads up an hour or so before an uninvited guest shows up. Sometimes I'm too busy with chores, or doing something for myself, that I can't hang out that moment. Otherwise I love making random plans doing small things with loved ones. On the other hand, from personal experience, Friends get in relationships, or committed to their career, and stop showing up unplanned. It slowly goes from hanging out every day, to only seeing each other on important holidays slash birthdays, to maybe once, or twice a year. It's heartbreaking, but we often find new priorities in life, whether we knowingly push our friends aside or not. Left underscore plate underscore swinger says. Wait till you get older. At 40 you literally make plans to see friends 6 months in advance. Jessa Zillison says. Weird I'm more open and adventurous in my 30s than 20s, when I was far more of a stick in the mud. White Belt underscore DM says. I'm 39. Truth is, I'm tired when I get home. When I'm home, I'm home. If I have to run errands or something, I do it before I get home. But after dealing with people all day at my job, and then coming home, and cooking dinner, and taking care of my sick wife, and squeezing in time for some type of workout, the last thing I really want to do, is go to a bar. We can hang. But I would like a heads up, so I can plan, and mentally prepare for it. It's not that I, or most adults, hate uninvited guests or we have a stick up our asses. It's just that most of us have a lot of stuff going on in our lives. I only see my closest friends a few times a year. Most of us are fine with that, because we can easily pick up where we left off. Traditional underscore crew 6617 says. I can't stand it when people hust show up unannounced. How? Dare they try to provide companionship what, if they don't want your companionship? You are that winny annoying guy, that people just tolerate. Do better. 
Osses underscore rising says. TBH it's kinda rude to just show up to someone's place and expect them to have no other plans. Like, tomorrow it's my day off and I plan on seeing movies in the theater all day mixed with enjoying the book I'm reading between shows at coffee shops. I've been thinking about this for about a week, and if a friend just showed up with no warning, and expected me to drop all that I'd be pretty upset tbh. Elector underscore says. They say I'm busy, but when they're home they spend 4 hours watching TV with their S.0. On the couch, or playing video games, get food delivered, and then complain about being lonely, while not putting any efforts to not be. They sell their lifetime to a company that don't care about them. Once people are in their comfort zone you'll never be able to change them. Then on their death you get situations like what that nurse that worked on palliative care talked about. People biggest regrets are that they worked too much, stopped having fun with friends, and that they let their life passing them by instead of living all by themselves according to what they really wanted. That being said your thing about surprise adventure is stupid, make plans in advance. Professional underscore pass 486 says. Sometimes I have to look at the calendar 7 to 14 days out with hopes of finding one day to have peace and quiet. Absolutely sucks when a friend or family member hits me up with no notice to mess up my day where all I wanted to do was finally relax. Phantomcut says. Sounds like the friends are the issue. I can understand the uninvited guests. All my friends basically have the same schedule, because we work in the same career, but showing up randomly may not be inconvenient at all when those days off may be the only time one can do errands or chores. I always appreciate a text beforehand to check availability and gets things in order before leaving. Kate2020 says. My friends and I all have different schedules and priorities. It's hard enough coordinating within our individual households let alone with each other. We get together, just not as often as we once did. Part of becoming an adult is recognizing that you are not the center of anyone's universe, well, maybe the dogs, and learning how to pick up the phone to call or text your friends before you just show up at their door if you want to keep them. XX underscore codged 420 XX says. Sounds like you have a habit of showing up uninvited and being upset when people don't like it. Chuck 543540 says. I hear you. All the other comments here are valid, but I miss days pre-work slash kid slash wife where you could do just this, swing by someone's place to hang out. I think this was more of a thing pre-smartphone too, sometimes you had to show up at their place, if you couldn't reach them bc they ran out of cell minutes bc everyone was broke, and in their late teens or early twenties. What you are saying is true, the crazy thing is as you get older you work more, but have less options, to do the things you want to do with that money, it all goes into the family structure. On the plus side, having kids is like the best thing ever so that's the positive going the other way that balances this out. I think if I had gotten here, and was someone who regretted, having kids this whole thing would feel like quite the midlife trap, but I love the kids so it's awesome, but for sure could use more fun slash randomness in life, like there was 20 years ago. Joy Janort says. Only people who had decent childhoods think this. For many of us getting away from the family home was the first time we felt we could breathe and walk in our home without walking on wog shells. Nonidentifier says. Because I'm tired. The days are short, but the hours are long. Snavlerace says. Yes it does, especially when one has trouble adjusting to the harsh reality of adult existence. Then it really sucks. Sane underscore lane says. All you need is a fist. Five really good friends. Everyone else is just an associate. With that said, keep in mind that your network is your net worth. What happens if you get into a jam? Do you have someone who got your back? Think of our ancestors. These mother fricks. If they were recluse, they wouldn't survive. The element, starvation, predators etc would eventually get them. 
But, if they belonged to a tribe, they would have some backing. If you hunted alone, and broke your leg, you'd probably die. But if you hunted with a tribe, and broke your leg, you could rehab your leg and still eat. Find your tribe. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.